Welcome to the Battle Zone. Bullet Club. For, 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 for life. And it is to my great regret that we have to begin this episode of AWL Strong and Free with these two a holes. Rules lawyers, invaders, call them whatever you like. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Interesting first, they're pretty good ring that the tag team combination is of Rock Hall, Hughes Rubinstall, and Zostrick Gray, Jerry White. Together they are. Bullet. Well, the catalyst to professional wrestling, the Switchblade, Jay White, making the point that they have made noise, meaning they've attacked people, they've broken rules, they've acted like complete pricks, and they are see they do seem to be getting booked more. However, they've yet to actually win a tag team match. Juice Robinson has yet to win a match. Period. Jay White is one and one. In his AWL career. So, I don't know if Bullet Club BS is going to work in the AWL. And their opponents making their way to the ring, tag team combination of Raika Modeshi, Eruxion, Solar, and The Rock. Together they are Solar Wing. First appearance this season for the team of Solar Wings, Ligon Odeshi, Eruption Solar, the Solar Flare of Lucha Libre, one of Jushin Thunder Liger's final uh, students during his active career, and of course, The Rock, Eruption Solar, perfectly balanced, 43 wins, 43 losses. Uh, the Rock, on the other hand, bit different story in the win-loss department, 24-21. So both veterans, but both with roughly equal number of wins and losses. Of course, the win-loss records only reflect the AWL. It doesn't talk about career. So the fact that Eruption Solar just took down a NJPW Grand Slam champion, considering that even with 13 titles, I'm not entirely sure that's possible anymore. As the one of the last students of one of the greatest junior heavyweights of all time tags in the rock e h e r o c check the spelling fighting out of the tales of Sinbad We're looking for the young lion killer now steps over into that Boston crab and Japanese wrestling that's an insult to try and submit somebody with the the move signature to the rookies to the trainees the students. 15-minute time limit in this AWL rules match tonight. We've got a couple of good tag team matches, but in the main event, we've got a tag team facing each other. Canadian National Championship on the low. Look at that front flip. And he eats it. Canadian National Championship is on the line in our main event this evening as Kid Canada makes his first defense of the title against his own tag team partner. Unfortunately, those are the rules of the Canadian National Championship since... Kid Canada did not pin Hassan in the six-way scramble match. He has to defend against him. So T49 Pete, 49th parallel, potentially imploding a little bit later tonight. Also got a fight for four in the Joshi division. Check this out. Round and round and round he goes where he stops owning. He knows. Erupsian Salar going after Rock Hard Juice Robinson. We've got Dragoness. And Lupe Peligro, the knockout queen, looking to become the next contenders for the AWL Joshi Championship. Of course, that title will be defended over in Japan next week as Shinda Akuko faces Amy Wade. Amy Wade's tag team partner, Athena Jane, will be in action a little bit later tonight. And we've got Monster Union and the Tiger Brothers in tag team action. All that and more to come on this episode of the AWL, Strong and Free from the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. And so far, this match has been mostly Eruption Solar, and he's been showing why he's still one of the best high flyers in the professional wrestling business today. 
If anything, it looks like he's gotten faster. Doing something new with his mask, some, some new kind of mesh over the eyes. It looks kind of creepy, in my opinion. One, two, kick out. The Rock comes in and removes the catalyst before taking leave himself. Ripcord knee strike by Erupcion Solar makes the tag. And now The Rock is going to be looking for the spell check. He's going to be looking for Hitobito no Moonsaruto. Juice Robinson, the left hand to God. Ooh! The southpaw goes down hard, but the catalyst not going to be allowed to make a tag here. And The Rock standing between Robinson and the corner. I don't think The Rock sees that. Rock says, yeah, now he does. No, you don't. Another stunner. And Rock Hard Juice Robinson stuck between a rock, the rock, and a hard place. Collar and elbow tie up. Back elbow escape by Juice Robinson. Now remember, Bullet Club is here. Bullet Club Gold, I should say. They're a legally distinct entity, apparently. At least according to uh, David Finley. These two, this Bullet Club Gold faction from AEW, here in the Animated Wrestling League, because if they can get their hands on the World's Tag Team titles or the AWL Brand Championship, that could be Jay White's ticket back to Japan, who was banished from New Japan Pro Wrestling, banished from the nation of Japan by a combination of Hikaleo and the Mad King, Eddie Kingston. And now, looking for that power of the punch, blocked, paintbrushed. I don't know what Robinson was going for there. Kick to the midsection. And there's the left hand from the southpaw. Going up, spine buster. Goes into the quick cover for the one. Two, Robinson Solar breaking it up and possibly saving the match here. I'm not entirely sure. I think The Rock could have kicked out of that, but always better to check. Five minutes have elapsed. Ten remaining. We're about a third of the way through the time limit now. In the event of time limit draw, it's a push. Nobody wins, nobody loses. Right now, uh-oh. R-O-C-B-O-T-T-O-M. Check the spelling. It's the rock bottom. This is Tag Team Wrestling, something we love to highlight here in the Animated Wrestling League. Looking at the win-loss ranking, Solar Wings, this is their first match this season, so they're 0-0. Whereas Bullet Club Gold, 0-1 after a loss to T49P last week. Oh, what is this? Oh! Almost a Michinoku Driba. And of course, the switchblade in the end is going to look for Blade Runner. Okay, this is just embarrassing now. A pummeling. The strikers have grounded the high flyer, and Juice Robinson. I'm saying he's also should say he's also going to look for pulp friction, and the juice box are his other signature maneuvers. And Opsian Solar is going to try and pull out the supernova, the solar salt, and of course the move bequeathed to him by Liker himself, and that is the Romero special. I was sweeping to the corner. Tag Kogeki opportunity. And no, wait a minute, Exploder. Uh, and the referee's calling that a knockout off of the Exploder suplex. Solar Wings picking up the win with a KO. Here are your winners. Solar Wings. Okay, that just came out of absolutely nowhere, but that's the nature of professional sports. It can end at any time. Congratulations to Solar Wings. Athena Jane set for action against Edith Surreal in this singles match in the Joshi division and noticeable by her inclusion, the AWL Joshi champion 
will be in the corner of her tag team partner, Athena Jane. They are the number one rank in the AWL Best Four for the women's tag team division. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. I'm going to wait for the big boom. Good idea. There it is. And somehow, Amy Wayne does not earn her crest. No <clears> idea. In her sing first, making her win the ring from the Isle of the Mysterio. Accompanied by the reigning and the winning wrestling league, Joshi Champion, Amy Wayne. She is the modern day Amazon, Athena Jane. Athena Jane, a longtime veteran here in the Animated Wrestling League. She's been with the AWL Joshi Division as long as we've had a Joshi Division, and she is the dominant powerhouse. They're in. However, it's only recently that she's started teaming with Amy Wade, and so far they've been successful, undefeated as a tag team, of course, Amy Wade undefeated in general, and they are currently the number one contenders, the presumptive number one contenders for the Joshi Tag Team Championship since winning the Joshi Division Forge the Four Tournament. So we look forward to them challenging and hopefully breaking tag team supremacy going forward. But right now, the ephemeral queen, who apparently doesn't have a video, what happened? And her opponent, making her way to the from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Eden Radio. The ephemeral queen, apparently dealing with some uh, technical issues. We're, 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 that's on our side, by the way. Technical difficulties. We'll try to get that fixed as soon as possible. But right now, Edith Surreal making her way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, graduate of the Chikara Russell Factory. And one of the, I think, one of the, the hidden gems of the Northeast uh, independent circuit at the moment. She's held tag team titles with. Uh, Willow Nightingale, the reigning strong openweight women's champion. And she has competed here in the Animated Wrestling League as well. Not done as well as I'm sure she would think. Look, uh, not done as well as she would hog, I'll just say it. She hasn't won a match yet. She's 0-4 in the AWL Joshi division. So, 10 minutes on the clock, singles match, standard time limit. Color and elbow to start us off naturally, and a wonderful takedown using her opponent's momentum against her. That's exactly how you take down an opponent bigger than you. And Athena Jane is bigger than almost everybody in the division. Certainly here on AWL, strong and free. Athena Jane is 36 and 35 in the Animated Wrestling League. That makes this her 72nd match in the Animated Wrestling League. And Edith Surreal already looking for a submission here. She does tend toward the scientific scale, the scientific side of the scale of professional wrestling ability. Unfortunately, may have tried to grab a hold that was a bit too big for her britches there. Going up, reversal, inverted atomic, uh, sorry, inverted DDT by the former art project, if you know her history in, in uh, the latter days of Chikara. Going up, oh! I don't know if that was a crossbody block, a shoulder tackle, or something in between. I'm not entirely sure that Edith Surreal does either. I know in her past matches in the AWL, she has attempted to use uh, the Surreality Lock in order to finish off her opponent's submission maneuver, leg-based submission maneuver. I'm not sure if that's going to work in this contest, given her opponent. And it's certainly not going to work on the outside of the ring as the 20 count continues. Going up into the ring, returning to the squared circle, 20 by 20 foot ring here in the AWL. And that could be a problem for Edith Surreal because a lot of the independent uh, organizations these days are still using the 18 by 18 foot rings. Sometimes even 16 by 16. Which... It doesn't sound like much, but it makes a huge difference as far as, like, number of steps to the ropes, all sorts of just, like, fundamentals of the sport. He is surreal showing fighting spirit kicking out of that pinfall. Oh, and she was 
trying to build up a run for something, but she got just decapitated by that lariat. Side Russian leg sweep by Eda Surreal. Trying to negate the height of Oh, what is she doing? She's going for a spring. No, she's not. She thinks better of it. Takes her opponent back down, and this is smart. Rita Surreal. Keep her opponent off the ground, off the feet. On the ground. And the referee counting extremely slowly here. And Rita Surreal, senior official Joey Baba Ganoush, the famous Baba Ganoush wrestling family, maybe getting slow in his old age. I don't know what the heck that was about. I think he was checking for a rope break in between strikes of the mat. And considering we've had problems with referees not catching rope breaks here in the AWL, I understand that, but keep your count consistent, for God's sake. Oh! A lot of indie wrestlers using the ripcord, but I don't think I've ever seen a ripcord fireman's carry takeover before. And down into the STF, the step over toe hold face lock. Referee does catch the rope break this time. Edith Real doesn't have to be happy about it, but she does have to accept it. And now I think looking for the surreality lock or a variation thereof, and she gets something. A death lock, but I don't think it's fully in. Right now she's trying to apply pressure to the kneecap, to the side of the knee. Made her try to take out a, a, an ACL or an MCL there. Going up. And Powerbomb drops. Edith Surreal does the modern day Amazon. Oh, oh what the hell? I don't believe it. Edith Surreal just got hit by a flying giant Amazon. What the? With the wings of Mercury. Uh oh. Down! Death from above for Edith Surreal. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen Athena Jane do that. And I've seen, I think, I've, I've called over 70 Edith uh, over 70 Athena Jane matches. I've never seen her fly over the top rope. It's just not that kind of an angle. Coming up now on the halfway point of the time limit. I would hate to see this match end in a draw. At least that wouldn't be another loss on the, the tally of Edith Surreal. One of our uh, many frequent guests here in AWL Strong and Free, our Canadian branch. Five minutes of Five for me. Stalling vertical suplex, maybe waiting for the time count. I don't know. Maybe trying to waste time going for the count out win. I don't know. Oh! On those super thin mats, you can see the concrete outside the crowd barrier. Not a lot of depth to those mats. I think these two would absolutely fight to a double count out. Someone's gonna get back in the ring. We've only got two. It is surreal back in. What's she gonna do? She's gonna take the win? I don't think she has a choice. No, at 19. Elevated flatliner cover, that could be it. No, somehow, some way, some why, some what, some whatever. Edith Real gets the gets the shoulder up before that final and fatal three count can be registered, but here's the strength and power of the Amazons. With less than four minute no. No, 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 no. We've seen. We've seen, the, oh, elbow drop from the top. And this can only lead to Hisatsuaza, the fall of the god. Athena Jane has expanded, and now laughing at Edith Surreal. Athena Jane has expanded her repertoire to include high flying attack. And in the end, it's the fall of the gods that gets the knockout. Here's your winner, Athena Jane. Unbelievable. Oh, that's interesting. A little bit of arrogance from the winner, talking to an undefeated champion, but you know what? Still a hell of a win.
Returning now to the tag team division, the Tiger Brothers versus Monster Union. And we're going to see how this plays into the larger scope of things in the AWL. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, being accompanied by Spring Tiger, fighting out of the unified School of the Tiger style, the tag team combination of Tiger Balls 3, and the reigning and wrestling league, Grand Champion Black Tiger Justice. Together they are the Tiger Brothers. And currently, they are the number two ranked in the best four of the tag team division. So, a win here will maintain that rank. However, if the monsters of Monster Union pick up a victory, that gets them into title contention and might knock, I mean, certainly knock the Tiger Brothers down to number four and possibly knock them all the way out of the ranking. Every match in the AWL is a high-stakes match because win-loss records are on the line, ranks are on the line, championship opportunities, title matches are on the line, and sometimes it comes down to that one match, that one three-second screw-up, that one moment of unintelligent defense that the referee interprets as a knockout. That one blown call. And their opponents, making their way to the ring from the realm of the Yorkai, accompanied by the Manipulator, the tag team combination of the Serpentine Sensation, Beats Sky. And King Akira, together they are, Monster <sighs> Monster Union coming to this match, uh, Owen Doe. Their first appearance as a tag team this season. And of course that witch, the manipulator, pulling up the rear. No idea what she's thinking. No one ever knows what she's thinking. The Tiger Brothers coming into this match 1-1, one and one, coming in third place in the Forge the Four tournament. This will be their third match as a tag team this season. And they are a dominant tag team. The Tiger Brothers hold the record for most title defenses in a single reign of the AWL World's Tag Team Titles. Viva Monster Union, the battle cry from the field commander. The, the manipulator is the one in charge here. But the field commander, the one in charge in the ring, he beats Sky and he faces off against the grand champion one on one. And that's another thing to consider, another thread in this contest. If you pin the grand champion, that gets you at the very least into a fight for four. We're going to have a fight for four coming up in our very next match for the Joshi singles title, Dragoness and Lupe Peligro. But if Hebitsky or King Akira could pin Black Tiger Justice, well, that would get them into the conversation. And at the moment, we do have a, an opening in the best four. The AWL, uh... Yep, AWL Grand Championship, best four, currently Matt Classic Senior at number one, Jigoku Destroy number two, Gokuhishi Dark is number three, number four is vacant after Tiger the Dark failing to capture the title. Last episode of AWL Hontai, Snakebite from the over-the-shoulder over the shoulder position, and that's the thing. He is a master of the cutter, his beat sky. He will pull those cutters out of any possible position or angle he calls it the snake bite and of course you got to be careful that deadly cobra venom that he spits with impunity seemingly and of course the ta the tag team combination the pyramid bomb lots of options here for monster union a skilled and effective tag team over the years belly to belly slam by Hibitsky 
as Tiger Mask 3 is calling for a tag. I'm not sure if he's going to get it. BTJ coming into this match 63 and 34 in his AWL career. This is his 98th match as an animated wrestling league wrestler. Heavy Sky 22 and 25, making this his 48th match. Cover for the one, two, almost a kick, almost a very short match as well without a single tag. Oh, then, oh god. Oh god, the venom. That hissing, spitting cobra venom. And the champion is blind. The AWL Grand Champion fighting blind. He get to the corner. I think, uh... I think Spring Tiger will be able to help a little bit. But right now he's working on instinct and that's how he gets thrown out. And I know he knows he's on the outside, but right now... The AWL Grand Champion fighting blind. He's just sort of lashing out at anything he sees with a cutter of his own, a neck breaker, I should say. And he's got to be careful that he only attacks the snake and not the other tiger. Oh, wait a minute, Tiger's Destroyer! The Cobra Venom. Not inhibiting the power, there's a snake bite! He used to beat Sky's own snake bite against him as Tiger Mask 3 returns to the corner. Ready to make the tag. And the champion needs to make the... No! Tiger Mask 3 going off on his own. Maybe going off plan here. Going off battle plan. Oh! Down goes the mummy. And of course it doesn't matter how often Tiger Mask 3 goes in and out of the ring. He's not legal. That could get, I mean, you, you get a you get a point in the win loss records by a count out, so who knows? Ooh, hard arm breakers, both legal competitors now in the ring, and we've had a tag team match without any tags in it so far. Until maybe right now, opportunity knocks. No, it does not. Kick to the midsection, going for another neck breaker. Wait a minute, the Manipulator now getting involved, distracting the Grand Champion. Oh no, what is this going to be? Oh! Uppercut right to the back of the head, and they always say it's the shot you don't see coming that knocks you out. A shot to the head that can literally cause you to go cross-eyed. And finally, nearly uh, nine and a half minutes into the match, sorry, five, sorry, four and a half minutes into the match, we have our first tag... And it leads right into the Black Tiger Buster. But the mummy's going to be way too fresh for that to work. We may as well give it a shot. One. No, the rope break. Caught by the referee. As the beats guy slithers out of the ring. What do we have next? All an elbow tie-up. Tag Kogeki opportunity. Might be time for Tiger's generation. Well, I tag Kogeki... And we have, for the first time, two different people Five in the ring. Five minutes elapsed. Ten for me. Mmm, stereophonic kicks by the Tiger Brothers. As Tiger Mask 3, with a flurry of strikes and offense, educated feet, as they say, DDT. Tiger Mask 3, walking into this with 42 wins and 32 losses in his AWL career. And a future... Canadian National Championship match in the balance. If Kid Canada survives as champion tonight, Tiger Mask 3 is in the queue. Cover. One. Two. No. Whereas King Akira, 23 wins, 24 losses, miss with the Tiger Salt. Ooh, clubbing blow. Into the cover here with nine minutes on the clock. One, two, kick out by the Tiger. Crowds are, crowd seems to be trying to get a chant going, but not quite getting there. Ooh, body blows by the Tiger. Hits the drop kick, does not take the monster off his feet. A second one, equally ineffective. Yeah, I, think you, I think you could keep doing this all day. The drop kick's not going to work, kid. Drop kick is not going to work. Spine Buster. And oh, makes him famous. 
Jutes the half, covered by the Tiger one. Not even a one count before it's broken up by Hibitsky. That snake can be pretty much anywhere. And dropping down at least momentarily into the Tiger's Maw. Clamping across the throat of the illegal fighter. Oh, no, what the hell did... No, oh! I don't know what just happened, but he got caught into a uh, backbreaker. And a, a masked grab of a toss. King Akira, obviously, with the power advantage here, and he's taking... Well, okay, he's just trying to choke him out. Oof. That might have been a thumb to the eye, but I think that was necessary. Ooh, I thought it was going for a bulldog. Turns into a DDT. From the wheelbarrow position. Absolutely incredible wrestling. Going up. Back elbow. The next generation. Tiger. Faint. Kick. Connected. The Tiger style elevated. Evolved. Tiger Kenoshinka. Into the cover. One. Ugh. This could go to a time limit draw with basically nobody able to stop the brakes. Have these guys got to get out here, before, out of here before the official starts making that disqualification five count? Collar and elbow. No. The tree of woe. The mummies hooked up for a ritual from the Book of the Dead. Right hand, crazy lariat. Oh no. We've seen what over the years what King Akira can do when he's got a little room to to start gaining momentum. And the tiger knows he's got to cut this off. Tiger mask. A long way to go for an arm drag. We managed to control his opponent and keep his opponent on the opposite side of the ring from the partner. The mummy is isolated. Almost like the rest of the Dark Universe never took off. Oh, oh! Some hard kicks, and this is great tag team strategy. Ooh! But can he hold him? No, he cannot. King Akira cannot be contained by even the strongest sarcophagus. Six minutes left. And the tag is made. In comes Hebitsky once again. A beats guy who on paper should lose this match, given the win-loss ratio differential here. But we've seen that this snake can slither his way into any position in the ring. And oh, and right there, going after the other guy. He wants to... I, I think this is what he wants. I think a beats guy wants to pin the grand champion. That's probably the manipulator's plan to spring Tiger coming in to check on one of her charges. Going up, going back, the stack of something. Oh, wow. Your legal fighters right now, I will tell you, are Hibitsky and Tiger Mask 3. As TM3 getting back into the ring. Ten minutes of an Five remain. And, oh! Spear on the outside to the wrong guy. Tiger Mask trying to maintain control. No, snake bite! Snake bite! Snake bite! Out of nowhere! Snake bite! For the one! Two! There's nowhere to... Nowhere to hide there. It took pure guts and fighting spirit to get out of that. Tag team wrestling indeed. Jawbreaker. Call it... Come on. Oh, drop kick. TM3 is going to have to put this away. No, the tag is made. And I don't think the tag was made on the other side. The touch of Anubis. The touch of Anubis. For the knockout. Let's take another look at that. That was that earliest snake bite on the outside. There we go. That was the beginning of the end. But it was the touch of Anubis that did it. Here are your winners. Monster a huge win, though they did not pin the Grand Champion. One-on-one, -on -one, someone gets an eventual title match. What more do you need?
and the Dragon Anthem rings throughout the AWL arena. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is a fight for four. Actually, in the battle zone. <laughs> Making her win the ring, now residing in the GTA. The daughter of the dragon, Dragoness. Dragoness, second generation, daughter of the original AWL Dragon, the first ever AWL champion, and now head trainer at the dojo. Dragoness, a former AWL Joshi champion, a former AWL Joshi tag team champion. She's looking to get back to the top of the mountain. And right now, she has to climb past. The knockout queen, but wait a minute, we must do one more ritual. As the dragon fire illuminates the arena as it was in days gone by. As we relive the glory days of the early AWL. Dragoness, bearing her father's sigil, carrying the legacy. And more than a capable wrestler in her own right, her First appearance this season. Looking to do some damage to the Knockout Queen. And her opponent, making her recording from Veracruz, Mexico, the Knockout Queen, Lupe Peligro. What can I say? You gotta watch the drop kicks. You gotta watch the spear. You gotta watch the blow out of nowhere that will knock you out. She's won more matches by knockout than anyone else in the Joshi division. That's Lupe Peligro in the blue and white, Dragoness in the blue and green skin. With the red dragon sigil on the tights. Ten minutes on the clock to start us off. Both women jockeying for position. Dragoness takes the early lead. Color now. Oh! Now, when it comes to technical ability, I call these two fairly evenly matched. High flying, I've got to give it. Oh, never mind. I was about to say high fly, give it to Lupe Peligro, but a beautiful landing off of that really German. Ooh, and a sliding leg drop. Something her father used to do. I remember. I remember him. I remember seeing him do that. He had a great leg drop back in the day. Color and elbow. Ooh. High leg lariat on the pullback. And Dragoness on the white rope. The middle strand. High cross body. Interesting angle from that. Of course, our ropes here in the AWL strong and free division, based on the colors and the pattern of the Canadian flag. We are proud to be hosted here in Toronto by our Canadian backers and investors who saved the who saved the entire AWL not that long ago. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Right hand by Lupe Peligro and every shot's a potential knockout for the knockout queen. So stay alert. This match could end at any second. Call an elbow again. If, and going maybe for another one of those sliding leg drops. Yes, she does. If it's I get the idea, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but if you keep going to the same well too many times, your opponents can start to anticipate and figure out a counter. Oh, shots to the head. Dragon, oh, Dragon has a little bit of the old martial arts here. And going up, we may be thinking Dragon Star. Yes! Dragon Star press for the one, two, and just barely a kick out at two and a half by the knockout queen Lupe Peligro de Luchadora from Mexico back steps. And sometimes that's the best thing you can do in wrestling is just back step for a second, give your opponent, break your opponent's momentum. Butterfly suplex by Dragonus. She's been training a little bit with Spring Tiger. So maybe a bit of a combination of the Tiger style and the, the Tiger, the Dragon School and the Tiger style. And you will believe a dragon can fly. Beautiful, high-flying offense by the daughter of the dragon. 
20 count on the outside. You can join the best four on a count out, but all, both these women know it. They've both been in the AWL for a very long time. Dragoness. Oof. This is her 81st match. 49 wins, 31 losses. Lupe Peligro. This is, oh nice, this is actually her, uh, her 30th match. She's 18 wins, 11 losses. So the experience advantage definitely going to Dragoness. Now, Lupe Peligro, she went to the outside. She loves the, the outside in springboard drop kick as a knockout maneuver. And these belly to belly overhead release suplexes. We've already seen a match tonight end by knockout off an exploder suplex. Maybe that's inspiring Lupe Peligro here. I don't know. One, two. Dragoness with the Tolkon. Leg drop. I think they're chanting women's wrestling, and that's exactly what this is. And it's just as cool as what the guys do. Maybe going for a... Oh, what, wait, what is this? That's a... Kimi Kubasta! That... That's... That... That was... That was almost like a kid a tonic. Lupe Peligro with a Kimiku Buster. Shades of a legendary AWL champion Wonder Kid. I haven't thought about that guy in years. Good grief. And that one error could be the difference between victory and defeat. Dragon Drop, number two. Part of her legacy, Dragon Drop two. That could lead to so many other things. Lupe Peligro realizes she's in trouble. She's got to grab a hold. Thumber hits the German. This time, Dragoness does not land on her feet. Five minutes in change. Kick to the midsection. Oh, I think, oh, she's got her trap. Five minutes have elapsed. Five remain. Hammerlock suplex. A suplex doing extra damage to the right arm of Dragonist. And that's going to damage a lot of her offense. And a high splash. Hey, these luchadores, they know how to fly. And maybe now going for that knockout dropkick. Yes, she is. Waiting for the right moment. Boom! Knockout kick. Cover. One. Two, three, that is it. Dragoneth. It was a pinfall in the record books, but that was a knockout pick. Take a look at that again. Yeah, she's gone. One more. Yeah, Dragoness not moving, just splayed out. No defense, not even attempted to kick out. And there you see the updated best four ranking, Shinda Akuko, will make her challenge next time on AWL Hontai. But for tonight, congratulations to the Knockout Queen. Main event time, title on the line, and T49P explode. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It's scheduled for one fall, one submission or knockout, and assign the winner. And it is for the Animated Wrestling League. Canadian National Championship. One of only two men in AWL Strong and Free in the 100 Win Club. AWL Grand Slam Champion, Hassan. 103 wins, 90 losses, ratio of plus 13. He goes tonight for the one and only championship that he has never held in the Animated Wrestling League. He's been the brand champion. He's been the tag team champion multiple times with multiple partners. He was the original AWL Intercontinental Champion, and he has won the AWL New Year's Tournament. He has never been Canadian National Champion. Could that change tonight? There's three other men with title shots who are hoping it is not.
And here comes a, I believe, triple crown champion. That's right. He is the Canadian national champion. He has held the Intercontinental Championship. That doesn't count as part of the Grand Slam in the AWL. It's the Grand Championship. He's done that. It's the Tag Team titles. He's done that. Done that a couple of times. He did that with a song. It's a Contender's title. Either one. He's, he's the Canadian National Champion as we speak, of course. The only thing he hasn't done, he has never won the New Year's Tournament. He's competed in it, he's gotten close a couple times, never actually won the thing. Currently at 64 wins, 57 losses, he needs 5 title defenses including tonight to cash that beauty in for a Grand Championship match. Now, I want to know the interpersonal dynamics here. Will these tag team partners be able to coexist for that beautiful championship on the line, we go now to ringside for official introductions. Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of New York City, New York, the Arab American Dream, Paul Stolon! Okay, a little bit of sportsmanship and here. And his opponent is the reigning and defending Canadian national champion, fighting out of Calgary, Dramatic Laws, Alberta, Canada. Tonight, making his first title defense. The most Canadian man in the world, Kid Canada! This is an officially sanctioned Canadian National Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWL Senior Official Joey Babagoosh in charge. Okay, they say this is going to be a friendly contest, wishing each other luck, showing great sportsmanship, but we'll see what happens. When the rubber hits the road in this championship main event, and I don't mean to stir the pot, I want these two to come out on the other side of this, better friends, with better, with even more respect for each other than they already have. T49P, Team 49th Parallel, one of my favorite tag teams in the Animated Wrestling League. Former World's Tag Team Champions. Right now it is Kid Canada bending the rules a little bit using that top rope, and of course, rope and misnomer, it's elevator cable. for a bit of an advantage in the opening 30 seconds here. Kid Canada coming out on top. The Arab American Dream is a Season Zero original. This is his 194th match. He may get to the 200 match point. I think he might be the first to do that. I have to double check. It would be someone like Jigoku Destroy or Project Tetsu who would be the only ones to possibly beat him there. And wait a minute, go, what is he doing now? Thought he'd be going for the bald eagle clutch. Instead, goes for a knee spike. A sun, now, this is what's really dangerous about these kind of matches. Much like the Black Tiger Justice Tiger the Dark match uh, on Hontai this week. When you've got two tag team partners, two people who know each other so, so well, they immediately realize, I've got to pull something different out of the hat. Atomic Drop. The Atomic Power Drop. Going for an American Samoa Drop potentially there, but doesn't get it. And the last Master of the Dungeon, part of that final graduating class. Oh! Slingshot, high cross body. High level plancha. And a Canadian leg sweep. On the outside. Now, since they're outside, I will remind you of the champion's advantage. Title only changes hands by pinfall, submission, or knockout. Does not change hands by countout, disqualification, or a time limit draw. Hassan in control on the outside here, but he's got to get his opponent back in the ring. That's the only way he can win the match. And he wants to be the Canadian national champion. He wants to travel a new path on the road less traveled. He wants to make that journey that Kid Canada is already on. These two were in the six-way scramble match. Kid Canada failed to defeat Hassan on his way to victory. 
elbow drop from the top. There's no water in the pool. As the Season Zero original, he's been in the AWL since the very beginning. He defies expectations. He defies stereotypes of professional wrestling. The Arab American babyface. And he's an American who's over in Canada. He's an American with the Stars and Stripes on his tights who's over in Canada. Think about how good you've got to be to do that. And right now, it's the, the very clearly American guy versus the most Canadian man in the world. And frankly, this crowd here in the Battle Zone in Toronto are split. They're just, this is a we like both guys moment for the AWL fans. As Hassan slips back into the ring. And that will reset the count. Oh, almost some Season Zero level AWL cat and mouse. If I remember right, Kid Canada actually came into the AWL in Season 2 of the Animated Wrestling League, and that was part of the World Warrior Exhibition International Trios Tournament that we did a grand total of once. A lot of great wrestlers made their debut in that match. Some of whom are still with us. Up and down! Fisherman Buster. Knee-breaking maneuver. 30 minutes on the clock in this championship match. Extended time limit to make count, make uh, time limit draws less likely. In fact, ever since we implemented the 30-minute rule, we've not had a time limit draw. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Powerbomb. They're going to go for the Canadian. No. No, 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 no. Bat. Oh! Oh, shades of, shades of a great Canadian wrestler, Kevin Owens. The powerbomb on the apron, and Hassan just splayed in the middle of the ring, face down. Canadian crunch! Canadian crunch! The Canadian crunch! But Kid Canada not able to immediately capitalize. And you don't, that, that's not a cover, that's falling on a guy. One, two. Five minutes have elapsed. 25 remain. Kid Canada incredulous at the kick out, and I don't blame him. Great counter. Momentum shifting counter. Paradigm shift, paradigm shift, paradigm shift. From the Arab American baby face. One, two. Kick out. I mean, yeah, we've got a couple of guys that get portrayed as as baby faces. Sami Zayn, the most popular. Doc Ali as well. Mustafa Ali, I should say. But he was the first. Hassan. Back in the early 2000s, when guys who looked like him didn't get to be the heroes. But for his entire career, Hassan has defied expectations. Huge splash, but no water in the pool. Low, low level lariat, a desperation maneuver, I think. One, two, kick out. And I don't care who wins this match, no one on earth will ever be able to say these two athletes didn't leave it all in the ring. Oh. oh. That sounded like a holy crap chant to me, and I agree with it. That was an incredible kick out. Get them at the hip toss. Telegraph the maneuver, but Hassan not able to put up a defense at the moment. And they could still be wrestling for another 20 minutes plus, folks. Now, wait a minute. Going for the most Canadian move in the world. The most Canadian man in the world. It's the sharpshooter. The sharpshooter locked in. Sasori Gatame, if you insist. But it is the sharpshooter. Every Canadian is born genetically knowing this move. And I don't think there's a wrestler who wrestles in Canada who doesn't want to use it at least once. Canadian Crunch for the second time, and Hassan just collapses. Holy crap, indeed. One, two, three. Kid Canada survives as Canadian national champion, and that is the correct verb. Let's take another look at that. Look at how he just crumples. It took Kid Canada forever to get back to his back back to back to sense, back to his wits. 
but after a hell of a match, a victory for the Canadian. Here is your winner, and still, elevated in wrestling league, Canadian national champion, One down, four to go. Next in the pipeline is the mixed martial artist, Lee Masters. But for tonight, the thrill of victory for Kid Canada. We'll see you next time on the Animated Wrestling League. Kore de Kimari Dai.